Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Chris from DIYE65E66.com, and tonight's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be replacing our front brake pads, and we're also going to replace the front brake pad sensor, uh, which came in with my little kit here. I got four brake pads, two for each wheel. Um, came with my uh, little synthetic uh, brake lubricant for uh, noise, and of course my front brake pad sensor, which is this right here that goes between the brake pads to uh, monitor the sensor of the brake pad wear. And of course, what I'm getting is I'm getting um, a message that comes up on my uh, iDrive, and I'll try to include that in the beginning of the video. But uh, it says uh, brake pad. Um, Either brake pads need to uh, be replaced or brake pads low, but mine with the new facelift 2006 E65, it says brake linings to minimum depth, and it actually has a little red um, thing on your dashboard, and it chimes up on your iDrive. Again, I'll try to include um, uh, that uh, in this video. So first thing what we're going to do here for our brake pad replacement, our front brake pad replacement, is we're going to go ahead and chalk the back wheels. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place our chalks, our wheel chalks, under the back tires so that we're going to, when we jack it up, of course, the car doesn't slip backwards. So put these under your rear tires, but before you jack up the car, come around here to your lug nuts and loosen them up just a little bit. Just to make sure that you... Uh, Loosen them up before you jack up the car because the tires are going to spin if you're going to try to loosen them up. So just loosen them up a little bit. Don't pull them completely off. Jack up the car and then take off the wheels, each individual one at a time. And I recommend putting the car on jack stands as well because just in case your jack comes down, if anything's underneath the car, you don't want it to come on down on the rotor. So put some jack stands under there and let's begin. And guys, if you're wondering, the lug nuts on mine are 17 millimeter. All right, guys, now we're on the driver's side here, and the driver's side has the brake pad sensor connected right here, and then, of course, it goes up to your box right over here. We'll get to that in a little bit here. All right, guys, and the first thing we do here is with our wheel off here, we're going to go ahead and remove this little bolt right here um, that holds the, uh, the rotor on, and this bolt here is a T40. A T, again, is star-shaped. You're going to just insert it right in here. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hold the rotor down with your left hand while you loosen this. Mine wasn't on there very tight at all, which was very good. But now this bolt is loose. Um, if you really want to, you can have someone jump in the car, push the brakes down to hold the rotors down, and then crank it to the left. But I was able to just hold it with my left hand. All right, next you're going to look right here on the back of the caliper, and you're going to see the brake pad sensor. And what we're going to do is we need to remove that brake pad sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a flathead screwdriver. We need to get in the, uh, the cra uh, crease here, and we need to relieve some compression here. So you just want to be careful with this here. Um, it's going to be hard to uh, film and do this, but you just need to go ahead and bend it back a little bit. Very gently, relieve some compression, pop this sensor out. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is right behind the rotor here, you're going to come back and you're going to see an 18 millimeter bolt right here. And these are your ABS lines, so you might want to remove them out of the slot here and just kind of tuck them away so that if you're loosening this, it won't get in the way. So you got one 18 millimeter bolt there, and then down here at the bottom, you have one more 18 millimeter bolt right here. And you go ahead and loosen both of those, take those bolts off, and then the whole caliper we'll go ahead and remove. Alrighty guys we got one bolt out here and remember there is a washer connected to it as well and then you have the second bolt in right here but what I did is I left that just hand tightened in to hold the caliper up. You don't want this caliper dropping because of course you have your brake lines you want to be careful with that so grab a paint bucket so after you release the compression here you can put a little screwdriver right in there release a little bit of the piston compression take out that bolt there, slide this whole thing off, grab a paint can or something like that and set it on top of the paint can so you're not stretching your brake lines right here. You want to be careful with those. All right guys, for this next step, we need to remove this spring here, this cover here. So the easiest thing to do is grab your flathead screwdriver like this. You're going to put it in behind it and push back. And so that actually pushes the spring back, you see it? And that releases 
this from its tab here, and then we're going to go ahead and pull that guy right on out. All right, guys, we're at this point here, and as you can see here, I've grabbed my a good little Amazon box here. I set that underneath so my caliper can rest up against the wall of the thing. Don't let that slip. You rip that cord out, you're not looking too good there. So you want to um, go ahead and brace it here. And um, here's my little spring fully out right here. Let me show you that real quick. There's what it looks like there. Again, remove that guy. And now it's completely off the rotor there. And it did take a little bit of uh, pressing in with the uh, screwdriver with the compression. So uh, just keep at it and the caliper will just remove right off. So again, our two 18 millimeter bolts up top and down below and our whole entire caliper is off now. So let's go ahead and remove the brake pads out of the, uh, the slots here. And uh, let's see, it's a little hard because I don't have much room to work with today, but um, you can just take a flathead screwdriver, your fingers, and just pry those out of the sockets. I'm gonna set this down, I don't want this caliper to fall, but just pry the brake pads out and we'll put the new ones in. All right guys, and this is the way I pulled them out here. As you can see, one is a little bit different than the other. This one has the uh, hinges that kind of slide right in. This one is a little bit different. This one has the little loopy loop on top. Now the loopy loop on top with this brake pad here came off of where the brake line goes in the large side of the piston. Okay, remember that one. So again, brake line was with the little loop-de-loop. Now just these with no loop-de-loop was on the outside of the rotor and that would be the closest to you when you're looking at the rotor. Again, it goes right on like that. So remember that for putting them back in. All right guys, look at the difference from brand new brake pads. Okay, there's my fingernail there. Very nice and thick. And look at these guys right here. That's how low I wore mine. I think we were almost grinding. There's just a tiny bit left right there as you can see. But again, these are BMW genuine here. So the only difference is that these ones are organic. That's why they're very, very dusty. But I've switched over to, I believe these are uh, full ceramic. Um, if not, they're uh, semi-ceramic. Uh, but again, I'll look, look in the description box below for those links for that, for the genuines. If you want to go organic and go green, get the BMW Genuine. If you want to go semi-ceramic or full ceramic, again, look below. Something else to note, guys, is I'm glad I bought a new sensor as well because my brake pads were so worn down, my old sensor was just jammed in there, and I actually broke it trying to get it out. Um, again, my car has about 138,000 miles on it, and I believe this front brake sensor and the front brake pads are original, never been changed out. All right, now that the pads are out, we have a couple of different options here. You can take some nice brake cleaner. This is a good one here, I've used this before. Uh, I'll have this in the description box below, check that out. But uh, this comes with a little straw here, you know, and you just kind of spray it on your, uh, your inside your, your brakes and kind of like, you know, don't get it in inside the pistons, but kind of just spray it around, clean it, wipe it off with a rag. And then your other option is, this is really good here, um, I'll have to find out what the name brand is because I've used it many times, but I put this uh, sometimes on the back of the, um, the brake pads, and uh, this is kind of your uh, brake noise quieter there, but I'm going to put on the solution that came in my little thing. And the solution, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the solution on anything metal on metal that will go ahead and rub. So I'm going to put it around the, uh, the piston little ring here, so what you do with this stuff here is, for instance, you would flip this over and you would just go ahead and gunk this stuff. You know, what I did with my old Cadillac, I gunked it all around here, here, and then I just went ahead and put some around the base here and here. Uh, BMW ones are a little bit different than my old Cadillac where we didn't have these. Um, I put a little bit up in here and here. This is optional, of course, and du double check. Um, uh, do some research before you uh, use this. I'm probably not going to use this, but if you're watching this, you have a different car, you can definitely do it. My Cadillac was fantastic after I used this on the back of the brake pad, and then that really quieted down. Um, I had some squeaky, squeaky brakes uh, with my old Cadillac. All right, guys, so what I did here is this compression go moves, so you can just kind of push that out of the way, and then I sprayed some of my spray on my little rag here, and then I took a glove, of course, and then I wiped the outside rim to go ahead and get that a uh, little bit cleaner. 
And it looks like with BMWs, um, this is my first time doing this, but it looks like there is only one large piston. My other Cadillac CTS, it had actually two piston compressions right up here. This one just has one. So I just cleaned that one there. Now I'm going to get some silicone, uh, that, that stuff that came with my kit. I'm going to wipe around the edge there and put it on the pads as well. Again, anything that touches metal on metal. All right, so again, in my little set there, anything metal. So go ahead and use a clean glove. And we're just going to go ahead and wipe it on anything here. So don't get it on the pad itself, but you can get it pretty much anywhere where metal touches metal just to prevent any type of noise. So, I mean, you can get it all the way out here, no worries. Just don't get it on the actual ceramic pad or organic pad, whatever kind of pad you have. So rub it all around here, 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 and again, the piston outside ring as well. And you can do that on all four of them. Alright guys, so now that the both brake pads are out and before you put them back in, we're going to have to uh, go ahead and use a C-clamp or go ahead and use um, some uh, a monkey wrench here, or I'm sorry, whatever you call this one here, uh, wide grip. And uh, I'm going to use that one here, and the easiest thing to do, we're going to go ahead and remove this here. So this simply just slides straight out, just be careful with it, and that shot slides straight out there. and. You can leave it kind of hooked on the edge right there if you want, or you can take it out completely. I'm going to probably take that out completely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap this with a towel, and then we're going to uh, compress that in so we don't want to uh, put any uh, rivets uh, or damage the, uh, uh, the piston there. All right, guys. So, again, what I did is I used my... These big guys opened the mouth really wide, took a cloth, and use the edge right here and compress it down and be careful not to do it too much this is just a little bit of the uh, the rubber there um, because it's all the way in just be careful not to rip the rubber here compress that in now you have room for both brake pads and so you can go ahead and slip the first one in vice versa all right guys that's what it looks like when it's completely compressed in there lies flat against the little rubber over here that way your new brake pads of course again are very very thick so you can fit both in. And before we put on the new pads here, um, we're going to take some um, of that uh, high temperature grease and we're going to go ahead and rub it on these after we clean these, the floating part here. That goes back into the holes here and here. Alright guys, and if you're having trouble getting back the, uh, the new pads back in, what I did here is I just got my little niche uh, top here and I went ahead and slid it in first. And then I lined it up here down at the bottom here. And then, of course, I went around the corner here. And you'll have a little gap right here. And you can actually take some needle nose pliers, help that little uh, metal shim or uh, plastic shim, whatever they gave you, um, help it into that and guide it into uh, down here. And then just make sure it pushes in evenly on both sides, top and bottom. And then this is flush against the caliper here. All right, mine took a little bit of playing with. But again, just make sure they're lined up in these little grooves here and here. Play around with the compression if needs to and slip them on in. And then let's go ahead and put this back on the rotor. Alrighty guys, and your 18 millimeter bolts, make sure you hand thread them in first and then tighten them down. And if you want to get specific torque specifications, uh, go ahead and look online. But I just tightened it nice and German strength, you know. Um, they were on there pretty tight, so don't, uh, don't uh, be too flimsy with it. You know, give it a nice little uh, real good oomph to it. And um, okay, so now we need to, because I'm installing a new sensor, if you haven't already taken out the old one here, it's up here in the box here. And what we have to do is just follow the line straight up there, and it's hooked in here. Alrighty, and uh, the little box here has a couple latches right here, very easy. Just pull up the little tabs here and here, two tabs, and it opens right to left. So as we come around here and we take a little look here, we see our little plugs there, and we want to go ahead and unplug. Of course, the uh, uh, brake pad sensor one, and then plug in the new one. All right, and how to remove the sensor here, you're latched onto a little thing right behind the shock here, and the whole little thing comes out of that slot there, and then you're following it along here, and this one here, it just pops right out of that little slot here. And then, as we come around here to our trap door here, look at my wires, we're pretty frayed here, 
So that my wires were pretty frayed here, so that doesn't look too good there. But then that, of course, is attached up there, so be careful. You're going to have to disconnect that. So I'm going to put the camera down, disconnect that, plug in the new one. All right, guys, and this right up here is your kind of your pull-out thing here. Make sure you don't injure this thing. It has a little push tab right there where my thumb is. You push that in and just separate them. Pretty easy there. And now we're going to go ahead and attach the uh, new sensor. We're going to go ahead and plug it in, the white, of course, to the white back up here. And then we're going to wrap it around, insert it back into the slot here, and then insert it back into the slot here. And then we're going to go ahead and come down here to the caliper and insert it right into the back of the brake pads. All right, guys, now that the brake sensor is all tucked away, right there and behind the shock here, we have our sensor here. And now what we're going to do is we put it back the exact same way it did. See how there's that little slot right there where my pinky is right there? Well, the line goes out this way. The head of it goes this way with the little U facing the passenger side. Again, the same way you did. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to put the gold teeth, see that little gold part of the sensor right there? You're going to fit that right into that little slot right there, and it's going to lock into place. Be gentle, don't break it. Let me switch hands with the camera here, and we're going to go ahead and put that on in. Okay, fantastic. Don't shove it in too much. Don't wiggle it back and forth. If it's a little bit loose, it's okay. Mine has a little give to it, but not bad at all. Um, not much. It's nice and snug in there. It's not going anywhere. So that is it, guys. Um, fantastic. So the sensor is in. All right. Now that the sensor is in, what we need to do here is we need to put back this little piece here. So the easiest thing to do here is, again, we slip it behind this area here. And it's a little tricky with the camera. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just working with very little room here. But you want to put these little guys, again, behind this area here and then the area down there and then we squeeze this upwards again and again this latches in here like that just like you took it off so i'll be right back with you when i get that taken care of so that now is back in nice safe and sound clips in right there and the words little nudge right there and we're done with that part and also don't forget to put back your abs wire back in the slot and then to go ahead and click it on in there it should uh kind of latch like that there completely closed there alrighty and just double check all your work make sure that your bolts again your 18 millimeter bolts are tightened down your sensors in it's attached and then again if you change your rotors go ahead and put this one back in uh, this does not need to come out if you are not changing your rotors so I'm gonna put that one back in I didn't change my rotors but I took that out anyway at the beginning of the video all right guys lastly we just need to go ahead and uh, reprogram our brakes so that the computer knows that we just changed them so take your key don't step on the brake and just insert it in hit the electronics that's the number two position that will turn your electronics on okay guys and this is what you will see because we haven't reset them yet the computer doesn't know that we've replaced them so we need to reset it so what we're going to do in the number two position here we're going to come back on over here and we're going to hit this, we're going to hold it down for 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. There we go. And what we want to do is we want to drop down to front brake. So we do that by just clicking it in to go down. Now we're at front brake. So now we hold down for 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. There we go. And it says back or reset front brake. So hit it down one time. That'll drop us down to, sorry, there we go. That'll drop us down to reset front brake. Now we hold it in for 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. Reset front brake, okay. Alrighty, now over here it says 25,000 miles until we need to do it again. Fantastic. Alright, let's double check with this. Let's go to menu and let's go to car data right here the car on the lift hit that one and now we have just spark plugs which i need to do and let's cruise on up and front brakes okay so with the new sensor in and the reprogramming everything is good to go guys but be careful also when you first back up the car your pistons are going to be a little squishy they're going to try to uh, connect a little bit so you're going to get a little 
little you know little cushion little softness in there and then it'll firm up uh, pretty quick so just be careful backing up don't just slam it in reverse back up because it's going to be a little squishy until that piston can find the right uh, momentum there on your brake all right guys and now that this is all done how to get out of this menu just start the car so foot on the brake we'll start the car and all this stuff should go away if it doesn't go away like mine didn't do it then hold it down for 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, because we already reset it. That's why it says that. And then it goes away. All righty. I think uh, the computer thought I was trying to reset it again. That's why I said reset not possible, but we're all good to go there. So if you start the car and it doesn't go away, eject the key, try that, or hold it down for another five seconds. The screen will go away. And there you go. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, stay tuned. Many, many more videos on the way. Thumbs it up so other people can uh, find it and help them out, hopefully. And if you guys have any questions, just holler. And I will see you guys at DIY E65 E66.com. You guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're stateside. And that is in two days. So happy Thanksgiving, guys, to you. And take care. Bye-bye now.